So in the second part uh, of this uh, unit on regular expressions, we're going to look at slightly more complicated uh, regular expression patterns. So in the first part of the unit, we introduced what a regular expression was for, why you'd want to go and use it. And we looked at specifying some relatively simple regular expressions that we could use to go and match our, our usernames. Um, and so far, we've seen that individual letters and numbers just match themselves in the order you give them. Characters which are enclosed inside square brackets um, match one of a set of all possible alternatives. Um, and we can specify a ranges of characters such as A hyphen Z to mean A to Z. Backslash D, backslash W and backslash S are used to represent a digit, an alphanumeric character or a white space character, respectively. And the capital versions of those are used to represent the opposite. So not a digit, not an alphanumeric and not a white space character. Backslash B is used to specify a boundary, a word boundary, uh, and technically backslash capital B is used to specify the opposite, i.e. only matches inside of words. Um, I should just add here that if you need to um, uh, try and actually match a square bracket, um, then you would write that as backslash square bracket. Um, so backslash open square bracket or backslash close square bracket. If you uh, need to match actually a plus sign, you write it as backslash plus. If you need to represent a backslash, you write it as backslash backslash. Um, and this is why we need to go and uh, make regular expressions use raw strings, because if you didn't use a raw string, then in order to get one backslash, you have to write two backslashes. And in order to get two backslashes, you'd have to write four backslashes. So without specifying a raw string, the regular expression to match a single backslash character would be four backslashes in a row, which just gets insane. This is why we use raw strings. Anyway, going onwards, um, the plus sign, um, when it's not backslashed, means one or more matches of the previous pattern. And then in curly braces, a single number means match that previous thing exactly this number of times. And if you give it two numbers separated by comma, it means match it between, in this case, two and four times. That's already quite a comprehensive set of possibilities, but there's still more we can go for. So um, more things that you use to specify a match. A single full stop matches any character. Well, as we'll see a little bit later, any character except a new line. Um, a caret or a circumflex outside of square brackets matches the start of the string. If you put it inside square brackets at the start of the square brackets, then it has the effect of inverting the set of options. So if I write square brackets, um, caret character A, B, C, what I'm actually saying is match anything that is not A, B or C. A dollar matches the end of the string. And then a star matches zero or more times. And a question mark matches zero or one times. And then there's a little bit of a clever trick you can do with a question mark. If you put a question mark after something else that specifies the number of times to match, it changes how that number of times to match behaves. Uh, and in particular, it changes how what we call greedy the uh, pattern matching is. So if I put a question mark after something like that specifies a range of times it might match. So, for example, curly braces two comma four, um, then it tells it to try and match it the minimum number of times rather than the maximum number of times. So here's um, uh, again a, a couple of examples of making some patterns that go and do this. So in the first example here, we're going to start off with a pattern very similar to what we've used before. So we have a word boundary, PY, then two digits, then between two to four alphanumeric characters, then a word boundary, and now I'm going to do dot star dollar. And the way to read that dot star dollar means 
any character you like, zero or more times until I reach the end of the string. So in other words, that's going to make this pattern match everything after the username um, uh, up to the end of the line. In fact, we're going to match the username plus everything else up to the end of it. Um, in the second example, I have said um, the opening char the carrot character at the start of that string means match at the start of the string. And then I specify in square brackets, I'm specifying a list of alternatives. But I start that list of alternatives off with a, another carrot character, which is going to mean except the things I've specified here. And I've just given it P. So that can be read as match anything that is not the letter P and do that zero or more times and then look for a username. So that second pattern is going to match the start of a string, so long as it doesn't contain a P, um, up to and including then a username. And so I've done that with our string each time, and you can see here the result. So in the first case, it matches the first username and then everything else after that to the end of the string. And in the second case, it matches the start of the string and goes all the way up to the first username. OK, so we're now going to move on to another feature of regular expressions, um, which is a thing called match groups. So sometimes we want to go and um, match something and then also record um, part of that regular expression pattern, identify part of that pattern separately. So, for example, here we were just writing some patterns which would match a username plus some other stuff on the same line. So suppose we were to write a regular expression that was going to match a whole line um, that included a username, but we also wanted to extract the username out of that out of that line. So we're imagining here maybe that we're say reading a file and we're looking for files which contain usernames, and then we want to extract the username out of that that line. So we could do that by having two separate patterns. So we could first of all have one pattern that's going to match the whole line, including a username. So uh, I've written that there. So the opening caret character means the start of the line, and then dot star is going to match um, as many characters as it can, followed by a word boundary, followed by username, followed by another word boundary, followed by as many characters as it can to the end of the line. So that first pattern is going to match any line which includes a username. And then the second uh, pattern is going to uh, capture just the username part. Well, that kind of works, but the problem with it is that actually compiling regular expressions is is quite slow and expensive thing to go and do in in computing terms. It's rather inefficient. So it would be better if we could write a regular expression that took a note of uh, where it matched the particular part of the pattern that was the username and could return that separately. And to do that, we use a thing called match groups. And match groups are basically just where we enclose part of our pattern in round brackets. And so if we take that first regular expression pattern we have, so again, we start with the caret, recognize the start of the string, dot star to match everything up to a word boundary. And now the username part is inside round quotes. We open round quotes, PY, then uh, two digits, then between two and four alphanumerics, um, and then we close the brackets to close the match group, and then we have the, the word boundary, and then we have the dot star dollar to pick out everything else. Um, so if I go and um, uh, apply that to our string, um, then you see it's matched the, the full string. Um, so I've just called result.group, and that's printed out the full match, and now I can call result.group and pass it the uh, parameter one. And that's used to say, meaning I want the first match group in the string. So when I call dot group, um, if I don't give it a parameter or if I give it zero, it matches the entire pattern, tells me what the entire pattern match was. And if I call result.group and give it a number from one onwards, it's going to tell me what that particular match group um, uh, that I specified in the pattern was. So that is going to pull out, in particular, the username part of the, the pattern. Uh, 
Uh, there's actually also a, another option, and that is you can use the indexing notation to get the same information from, from the result object. Um, so here you can see um, I've done pulling out the same information, but now uh, result is my the result from the pattern from uh, searching for the regular expression pattern. And if I just treat it like it's a, a list and I index it with zero, it gives me the first uh, group match. And then if I index it again uh, with one, it's going to give me the result of group one, which was just the email address. So that can be quite a convenient and slightly more compact notation for accessing the information in the in the result group. And you're starting to see here, this is why the result group, why the result object is so powerful to use, because it doesn't just contain information about the overall match, but it's also starting to contain information about particular parts of the pattern that we've asked it to pick out and recognize. So one of the questions you might ask then is why did the that pattern um, that to extract the username match the last username and not the first username? And that's because we started the pattern with the uh, caret dot star, uh, which matches as much text as it possibly can, um, starting from the very from the the first. So in other words, what it's going to do is going to match everything up to the last word that would be allowed to be a username. And so that's why it's picking out the last username from that string. If we want to change that, we need to tell that first dot star um, at the path pattern not to be so greedy. And we do that by adding the question mark after it. So this is the example of using a question mark after a uh, thing that specifies the number of times you repeat it in order to go and control how greedy it's being. So here I've done that. Now, when we run that pattern uh, with that extra question mark um, after the first dot star, then you see it's pulling out the first username and not the last username. So it still matches the whole things. It's just choosing um, where to go and uh, uh, where to go and match. So the other reason why we might want to go and use um, groups inside a regular expression is a bit like how you'd want to use them inside a maths expression, is to go and group a sequence of patterns together before applying a modifier to them. So for example, to give a specific um, example here, let's go back to our usernames. Um, and although the undergraduate student usernames contain a year in which the student was created, if you look at uh, usernames for postgraduate students who came to lead for the first time as a postgraduate student, they don't get a year group. So they just get a username which might look like PYSPQR. So they get the PY because they're in physics, and then the SPQR is a bit that comes from their name. So now we need to make the um, year part of their username optional so we can match both undergraduate and postgraduate students. And so we might write a pattern that looks like this. So we're again, we're looking for the start of a word boundary, the letters PY, and now I'm putting in brackets the um, slash D for a digit and the modifier that we want two of them. So I'm specifying I want two digits and then I, they're in brackets. And after the brackets, I've got the question mark. And what that's meaning is I want zero or more of the previous thing. Well, the previous thing was two digits. So the way to read that is saying I want the letters PY followed by optionally two digits. And then moving on, we want between two and four alphanumeric characters. So I've given it a bunch of usernames, some postgraduate, some undergraduate. And then we're going to look to see if um, group one has any content. Because if, so group one is going to be the, um, the result of that first sub match group. So in other words, the slash D two, which is optional. So if the in a postgraduate username, that group one doesn't have any uh, content in it. And so when we do if result.group1, that will return false. Um, whereas in an undergraduate case, it's going to have the year um, digits in it. And when you ask whether that's true or false, that's going to turn me out to be true. And so I can use that to go and say whether a username belongs to an undergraduate or a postgraduate uh, user account. And so you can see we just 
run through all the matches there and we identify which ones have year groups and which ones don't. So that's an example of using a um, match group, not just to extract some information, but also to group together like you would in a maths expression um, that um, to treat this whole little section of the regular expression as a single entity. So we've got another example of that. So we've already seen that we can use um, square brackets to specify alternative letters that could match. Um, so where we did square brackets A to Z. Um, but another way of specifying whether you want pattern A or pattern B to match is to use the vertical bar or pipe character. This is the same thing that's used as the logical or operator in Python to specify possible patterns. Um, and the advantage of using the, the or character like this is that the things you can match are not just single characters, but quite long, complicated expressions. But the way the or operator works is it tries to work with as much of the pattern as possible. So for example, if we were to write A, B, or C, D, the way to read that is it would match the pattern A, B, or the pattern C, D. But if we wanted to go and specify we wanted to match A, and then B or C, and then D, we would need to put the B or C inside uh, brackets. I mean, just to say, just very similar to how you'd write it in a maths expression, um, we would put it down saying A, open brackets, B or C, close brackets, D. OK, so can we think of a, a, a concrete example where we might want to do and do this? Well, actually, yes, we can. So we've been so far dealing with usernames for students that were initially registered in the School of Physics. But actually, students who are studying physics at Leeds can come from a variety of different routes. Um, so, for example, if they've done a foundation year at Leeds, they will have a, uh, a username that starts LL. Um, if they did uh, one of the access courses, then they're going to have a username that starts ED. So if we want to recognize these usernames as well, we need to go and write a pattern that's a little bit more complicated. And in fact, what we'd write would be something like this. So we would start with, again, a word boundary. And now I'm going to say I want to recognize PY or LL or ED. Now I need to put the um, PY or LL or ED in brackets. Otherwise, what would happen is we recognize PY or LL or ED, possibly followed by two digits, possibly fo then followed by two to four um, uh, characters. So in other words, without the, the brackets around the PY or LL or ED, it would match OK, the username starting ED, fine, but it would also think that PY and LL were matches, uh, which is absolutely not what we want to have happen. So the brackets are being put in there to um, control how much of this pattern is being uh, treated as a, as a single block. And so when we use that pattern, you can see then it does actually work. It picks out all of these possible usernames. Um, and so it's matching either PY or LL or ED at the start of something which otherwise looks like a username. Um, so um, in the case where we're using that um, uh, first round brackets, um, uh, as I was saying, if we don't use them, then you end up not matching where you want to go and get the right thing. Um, this also has the effect of achieving that we're able to capture those initial two letters um, in one group. So for example, result one, um, and then the year, uh, if it's present at all, in result two.